I'm the uh, Senior Director of Aerospace and Defense at Wind River. I also serve as the Chair of the FACE Business Working Group. I've been with uh, the FACE Consortium since uh, its inception in 2010, and I really enjoy it. Uh, working with this consortium, probably one of the uh, nicest things I've done in my career. And if you want to change the world one aircraft at a time, this is the consortium for you. So today I'm going to do a, a brief introduction to FACE, and uh, uh, hopefully you'll get a, a feel for the capabilities behind FACE and the way that uh, FACE can impact and make more efficient and affordable next generation systems. So we, why are we here? Next generation military avionics systems are challenged to provide advanced capabilities while balancing the cost to procure and maintain the platform over the life cycle of the deployed platform. This challenge is well described in this slide that you see in front of you. That's a GE Aviation's cost and complexity chart that shows the exponential growth of software in commercial military platforms over time. The critical component is the trend from hardware-defined systems to modern software-defined systems, where the cost to develop, integrate, and maintain software is growing at an unsustainable rate. Using open industry standards and advanced integration and maintenance technologies, GE was able to bend the curve for the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and other commercial aircraft. The goal of the Open Group, Future Airborne Capability Environment, or FACE, uh, the consortium is to duplicate and advance this success in military avionics systems in an open procurement environment with the goal of improving affordability, speed, agility, and excellence. So how do we start FACE? When, we've, uh, when the FACE Consortium was first formed in June 2010, we needed to migrate from a closed single vendor ecosystem system architecture to an open system architecture. This legacy federated system architecture is on the left-hand side of this graphic where everyone brings a, a single uh, hardware-based component with some software to an aircraft. At the time, both Apple iOS and Google Android were soaring in popularity, so we immediately tried to use these architectures at a starting point. But we discovered that uh, both of these architectures were not fully open, as depicted on this slide. And we needed to create an environment that had an open hardware, open operating system, open middleware, and open applications uh, environment that could be served by any supplier, large or small, in the defense industry. Therefore, we have FACE. With this open architecture, we were able to break the traditional barriers to innovation in military aircraft systems. Legacy platforms were traditionally purpose-built for specific aircraft and the avionics system within this aircraft were, were created to efficiently serve a given function within a legacy aircraft. This created barriers to deploying, integrating, and maintaining the software on other aircraft. The FACE approach changes the software architecture paradigm. The FACE technical standard created an open, layered architecture that allows any FACE software component to move from one aircraft platform to the next with minimal integration complexity on any desired hardware platform. This architecture is based upon proven commercial and military avionics standards. This allows the best-in-class technologies to be deployed on relevant platforms, which removes duplicative investment in similar airborne capabilities. From a business standpoint, it enables widespread affordability and best fit for the cost solutions, accelerating both speed to fleet and capability agility. The FACE Consortium is not uh, driven by just a few vendors. It is supported by all of the U.S. Armed Forces and over 80 organizations from industry, including all the major primes and tier one suppliers. We all work together on the FACE technical standard and FACE business approach as a diverse government and industry team that created a balanced, open solution. So 
So my face consortium, why can we not just get together and uh, come up with a standard ourselves independent of a consortium? Well, the framework for open discussion was facilitated by the open group as a voluntary consensus standards body as defined by the National Technology Transfer Act and OMB Circular Aid-119. This consensus-based environment supports a balance of interest and an organizational foundation to support a due process with an appeals process, which enables both government and industry to work together to create a common shared vision for innovation. As one can see from the slide, the many-face business and technical committees consist of a wide range of business and government entities. We've been busy over the last seven years. Uh, the FACE Consortium uh, has been very productive. We have not only published multiple revisions of the FACE technical standard with incremental improvements, we have also published a shared data model with a government's plan, business and contract guides, and a fully operational FACE software verification, conformance, and library process. We've also created a FACE problem request, change request uh, process for adjudicating any corrections to the published standards. <clears throat> the face conformance process, well underway, uh, was completed in 2017. The face certified product library is now being populated with face conformant uh, software from all segments. The initial products in the library were d delivered by Harris, Honeywell, Rockwell Collins, and Wind River. And we expect many more products to be certified here in 2017, or 18, excuse me. The FACE approach is now ready for building affordable, efficient, and competitive next generation aircraft systems. The FACE standards are ready to use, the government is ready to procure, and industry is ready to provide the latest capabilities using this advanced open interface software foundation. The goal of the FACE consortium is to enable agile, innovation, innovative solutions that give the military a strategic advantage. Additionally, the military has focused its avionics resources on engineering efforts on a single platform, stovepipe architectures, and software designs. With the FACE architecture, it is now free to focus on driving innovation across many platforms over the entire asset lifecycle. This increased application capability and utility speeds cutting-edge technology to those who defend freedom globally. The FACE technical standards stand on the shoulder of over 60 proven commercial military standards to provide value. It can immediately leverage the design and organizational efficiencies proven in commercial aircraft and drive these new capabilities into airborne systems. The FACE approach has four very powerful characteristics, affordability, speed, agility, and excellence. With affordability, we have created an open standard to be used by all future military avionics platforms and this creates an open and stable marketplace for these next generation systems. This is good for both government and industry. It reduces the product development costs for industry because they can now create a product line for the capabilities for future platforms. It's good for government because they can now select the best in class capability and use that capability across a wide range of programs and aircraft. The FACE technical standard directly enables greater speed and agility with a set of standards that have been proven and critically vetted by a consensus participation of members. We have not reinvented the wheel nor created another open architecture standard in our own image. The focus is on proven software foundation that drives down risk, accelerates schedule performance, and allows us to achieve objectives that are not possible using traditional methods, processes, and standards. Achieving innovation agility is critical to get to higher levels of interoperability and mission performance from aircraft. By using a common data model and characterizing data according to best known practices, it achieves higher interoperability across domains, systems, and capabilities. <laughs> this reduces the workload required to deploy new components and drives higher levels of mission situational awareness by leveraging standardized platforms and data architectures. The FACE technical standard establishes a software architecture that leads to a more robust structure for how components are built, innately driving excellence into software design, acquisition, and deployment. 
The FACE approach provides these standards uh, for both businesses and technical operations for both new and upgrade opportunities. The FACE technical standard is based upon proven rules of construction that lead to more resilient designs coupled with an enforceable conformance model that facilitates faster, more robust integration of software components. FACE already has its first wave of certified conformant software products listed in the FACE registry, and we expect to see more uh, certified conformant programs this year. Using the FACE uh, capabilities in a smart, intelligent way to create innovative solutions for future generations of airborne systems. Deploying FACE solutions will optimize scarce financial and engineering resources, enable the U.S. and its coalition partners to extend their strategic military advantages over the all global adversaries. All members of the FACE Consortium are available to contact to help train and guide organizations to advance the, the airborne systems into a highly efficient standards-based future. Feel free to contact any member for more information. You also may join the FACE Consortium and help create the foundation for all next generation advanced avionics platforms. Thank you. Back to you, Simon. Okay, Barbara, I've handed over to you, so please feel free to go ahead. Okay, uh, I am Bubba Davis. I am an employee, a senior software engineer at CRL Technology, supporting the U.S. Army AMRDEC. I've been involved with the FACE Consortium since 2011, um, and I'm currently the Data Architecture Working Group Vice Chair. Uh, but today I'm going to give you a FACE technical overview and just a very high-level uh, description of what the FACE reference architecture, the FACE technical standard provides um, to give you an idea of the, the technical advantages of using the FACE strategy. This technical overview I normally give in an hour and a half, so we're just going to scratch the surface today, so don't feel like you've, uh, uh, you've got a thorough, deep knowledge of the FACE technical standard just based on this 10-minute overview. Uh, the FACE technical strategy is to provide a software environment that enables moving applications from one platform to another. So the concept is we want to be able to move a capability from one DOD aircraft to another and minimize the software changes when doing so. The concept is the face computing environment that the technical standard defines exists on existing or new computing hardware, and it provides a common set of interfaces to your portable applications so that they can move between existing hardware, new hardware, move across aircraft. And th so this is a strategy used in industry um, across many different industry domains, and we are leveraging it for the avionics domain. The FACE architecture, the, you'll hear it referred to as the FACE software architecture, the FACE reference architecture, the real goal is it isolates a set of areas where variance in software can occur. And we've defined a layered segmented architecture that you'll see in a second. And the purpose of this is to provide a common set of interfaces and a small set of interfaces that software can use. By reducing the set of these interfaces, we can really isolate where changes happen, where variability can happen, and provide a common interface to applications. And you'll see the bold green lines on the, the figure in the bottom are these vertical interfaces that are well-defined face interfaces. We also recognize that different applications may need to exchange data. And if your uh, applications are exchanging data, we defined horizontal interfaces so that they are well-described, rigorously defined data-centric interfaces. This means you are rigorously defining any data you're exchanging so that the receiver of the data can understand and comprehend it. Um, this allows both integrators, subsystem developers to understand the data needs of all their software components and enable them to integrate them onto existing or new platforms. We are leveraging existing standards where possible, um, especially operating system. You'll see on my figure it mentions POSIX and ARINC 653. 
FACE has not tried to redefine or, or come up with our own standard. If there are existing standards that we can leverage and use, we have done so where appropriate. And so POSIX, if you have a POSIX operating system, that doesn't necessarily mean you're conformant to the FACE technical standard, but there's a subset of the POSIX APIs that we've selected that we use in, in the FACE technical standard, in the FACE architecture. And this slide, um, we could drop anchor here for quite a while, but I just want to give you an overview of the different layers, the architectural segments in the FACE technical standard. Um, the primary one and where most software is anticipated to, to reside is in the portable components segment. This is where your typical applications will live. So if you have an application doing tracking or navigation, it is most likely going to live in the portable components segment. And early analysis looked across aircraft and decide, determined that about 80 to 90 percent of applications could live in this portable component segment if architected correctly. So this is where you get your real portability between platforms is by developing these portable components. Um, you notice portable applications, you see my bold green lines again on the figure. They can use two of our well-defined interfaces in the FACE technical standard. They can use the OS interfaces we've defined. And we've defined an interface for transport services. And that's the next segment. The transport services segment exists to move data between components. So we are separating out from your portable applications your need to be concerned with how the data is actually transported. Um, this separation of concerns removes the necessary knowledge from the portable component developer for the data transportation, data conversion, all the details that happen there are outside the, the purview of the portable component segment developer and really lets them focus on the need of their application. <clears throat> Transport services again uses the OS API on the left hand side of the diagram. And it's also used to talk to platform-specific services segment. And these are software components that tie typically to a particular platform. They're less portable uh, than what you would see in the portable components segment. So we're going to have configuration, graphic services, health monitoring. Some of these types of common services live in this area. You also have platform-specific services that communicate to your I.O. services. So we've built a layer just for our I.O. devices. And this segment is lives to communicate with the device drivers, provide device driver normalization, and provide a common mechanism for a platform-specific services segment to access I.O. information. This enables us to separate from our, our real business logic or algorithms the details of data presentation, data transportation, and data input-output. So we're no longer tied to specific graphics displays, specific sensors, or specific transport methodologies such as DDS, CORBA, um, UDP, TCP. Those are abstracted away from the real business logic of the application that's performing our capabilities on our aircraft. And lastly, uh, there's an operating system segment. We are we have a one <clears throat> operating system that's listed in the FACE registry today. The operating system segment provides your typical POSIX or ARINC 653 APIs as defined by the technical standard. And by using a, a standard definition for these APIs, we can allow portable components to move from one face conformant operating system to another face conformant operating system. And we break that that explicit tie to an existing operating system. So if you get nothing else out of the face technical overview, if you understand these five segments, operating system, I.O. services, platform specific services, transport services, and portable components, if you understand those five segments, you have a good foundation and an understanding of what the FACE technical standard and the FACE reference architecture is trying to accomplish 
and the the ability it gives you to to develop portable software that can move from one aircraft to another. Um, just briefly, Chip mentioned the consortium. Uh, there's a technical working group in the consortium that's in charge of the FACE technical standard, and there's several subcommittees that uh, are responsible for different portions. i just list those up. I won't go through them, but just wanted to be aware that the, the technical standard, there's a large group of technical experts from both government and industry working and, and have been working on the, the design and the development of the technical standard since 2010. And lastly, <clears throat> I want to bring up, there's a, another organization, the Data Architecture Working Group. You know, I mentioned earlier that we use rigorously defined data descriptions across our transport services interface. Well, the Data Architecture Working Group is responsible for the FACE data architecture. Um, it's another working group, several subcommittees. The data architecture is included in the FACE technical standard up through and including 3.0. I will not try to give a data architecture working group or, or data, face data architecture overview as that's an upcoming webinar later today. So, and I believe that, that wraps my presentation, Simon, so I will pass the ball back to you. That's great. Thank you, Baba. Um, Judy, would you like to say a few words just to end today's session? Sure. Thanks, Simon. My name is Judy Serenzia. I'm from the Open Group. I'm the FACE Consortium Program Director. And I would just like to take this opportunity to thank you all for joining us today and to thank our presenters, uh, Chip Downing, uh, the FACE Consortium Business Working Group Chair from Wind River, and Dr. James Bubba Davis, the uh, Chair of our Data Architecture, Vice Chair of our Data Architecture Working Group within the FACE Consortium uh, from CRL Technologies representing U.S. Army Amerdeck. I appreciate both of you doing an excellent job. Uh, giving folks good information about the FACE Consortium uh, and our business and technical overview. And for more information, you can contact us at ogface-admin at opengroup.us uh, or uh, look for us at www.opengroup.org slash face for more information about the consortium, our work products, and what we're doing to uh, advance technical standard and meet business objectives for portable and reusable software on avionics platforms. Thanks so much for joining us today. Take care.